This week, I wanted to make a creepy cute little goth girl with a faithful companion, a button-eyed black cat. But every doll making project comes with its own unique challenges and a special recipe that gives each one a little bit of magic. This little girl is based off my 19 centimeter template. I've chosen some light stone color quilting cotton for the skin fabric with some natural ticking stripe cotton for the legs. I'm stuffing all the pieces with some polyester fiber. These all need to be stuffed really firmly so they don't collapse when I start jointing them together and adding detail later. I'm making the cat's body from a single piece, pretty much like the potato pets I made recently, but I've just made it slightly smaller so he looks in proportion to the girl. Before I close up the seam on the bottom of the cat, I want to add a waxed cotton cord tail. I've threaded a length of cord onto a darning needle and knotted it at the end. I should be able to poke that through the fabric and the knotted end will hold it in place. It's catching on the stuffing a bit, but it should come through with a bit of help. Or maybe not. That's not ideal, but I'm not defeated yet. So I'll thread it up again and give it another try. That's much better. I just need to tidy up that bit of stuffing that came through with it and it'll be fine. I'm making the knot bigger just to make sure it stays put. I don't want to have to try that again. I add a little bit more polyester fibre to make a solid base, then I'll close him up with some upholstery thread. I'll come back to the cat later. First, I want to joint all these pieces together to make the little girl. The shoulders, elbows, wrists and knees are all going to be bead jointed, so she'll have quite natural movement. I love these bronze finish metal beads. It's been a while since I've been able to find these in the right sizes. They're a little bit more subtle than the silver tone beads I usually use, and they have a lovely vintage feel. Metal beads can sometimes have one or two rough edges, so running a bead reamer around the hole is a good idea to smooth them off so they don't snag the thread. Because I've used round beads for the joints in the arms, they have a little bit of sideways flexibility. Those tiny movements make a huge difference when you're posing a doll. I think it just gives them a little bit more character. I wasn't able to get round beads big enough for the knees this time, so the knee joint is more like a hinge, but I'm not too worried about that for this one. I'm attaching the head to the body with the button joint. One button goes on the back where it'll be hidden by the dress. Then the thread goes up through the neck to the top of the head, where it's anchored with the second button. I'm using Gutterman top stitch thread for all the jointing. Any strong upholstery thread should do the job, but Gutterman have the best range of colours I've found. The tension between the two buttons creates a strong neck joint. The head will tilt left and right, but it won't flop to the side. I'll need to add a few more details before I attach the limbs to the body, but first I'm going to work a bit more on the cat. Each of the cat's ears is basically two triangles of fabric sewn together and left open at the bottom. I'm ladder stitching them all the way around to fix them to the head. These are so tiny they don't need any stuffing or interfacing. To help him sit up without support, I'm going to sew a couple of beads on the front near the bottom to act as feet or paws. Again, I've chosen some bronze finish beads to match the girl doll.
The face is going to be quite simple. I'm going to give him some little button eyes and paint a nose and mouth. Because I'm not used to working on something this small, I want to make sure I get the positioning right. So I'm marking it out with pins. He's kind of giving me Dalek vibes right now. I've picked out some tiny pale green resin buttons for the eyes. These need to be stitched through to the back. So I've marked out where the collar will be so I can hide the stitches underneath it. Now he's giving me void cat vibes, which I kind of love, but I do want to give him a bit more detail. I've mixed some acrylic paint in a pale lilac shade with a little bit of fabric medium mixed in. I'm just painting a simple nose and mouth to contrast against the black. I hoped the fabric medium might help the paint flow a bit easier, but it is drying on the brush, making it hard to get a fine line. I could use some flow improver or slow dry medium to fix that, but I haven't tested those on fabric, so I don't really want to risk it. I'll have a play with some acrylic mediums for next time. That looks pretty cute though. I'll come back to the cat and make some whiskers later. While I've got the acrylics out, I'm painting some shoes on the feet for the girl doll. I've mixed a darker purple shade for these. I use System 3 acrylics with Liquitex fabric medium. System 3 are considered student quality paints and they do darken a little bit as they dry, but the whole range is vegan friendly and overall I found the quality to be pretty good. I'll put a link to them in the description. Now the shoes are done, I can attach the legs to the body. These just need a small stitch at each side to hold them in place. They don't need to be stitched too tight. I'm making sure I allow enough flexibility so she can be posed either in sitting or standing. I fasten the thread off at the side of the hip. The stitches will all be hidden by the clothing. I'm shading around the eye area with Derwent Chromaflow pencils. I use the first coat to get the basic shape and position right. Once I've got them more or less symmetrical, I start building up layers of pigment and working it into the fabric with a blending pencil. I'm using black and dark brown to get a nice dark shadow that'll fade out around the edges of the buttons. The blending pencil helps to smooth out the edges and stop the outline looking too harsh. That'll need a coat of fixative spray, so while that's drying I'll work on the dress. This embroidered lace is just gorgeous. It's a very subtle pale gold shade with a silky, almost metallic finish. I'm going to sew it onto some of this linen look lace to make a dress. Then I'll find something darker to go underneath it. I had a little bit of the embroidered lace left from the dress, so I used it to make some underwear. I'm making a black lace petticoat to go over those. The black lace should be thick enough to add some contrast to the dress and make the pattern stand out without it being too stiff or heavy. I want all the layers of clothing to stay firmly in place, so I'm stitching them directly to the doll. I'm taking a bit of time to get the fit right. I want to position the bodice so it completely hides the button on the back. Then I'll ladder stitch it up the back with some top stitch thread.
Now the dress is in place, I can join the shoulders. I hide the knot under the bodice at the back, pass the thread through one shoulder, through the bead at the top of the arm, then right through the body to the other shoulder. I stitch through each shoulder twice, then fasten the thread off under the back of the dress. I've chosen some 15mm vintage look coat buttons for the eyes. I position them in the centre of the shaded area and stitch them right through to the back of the head so they sit nice and tight to the face. This time the stitches on the back of the head will be hidden by the hair. If you're enjoying watching this little one take shape, don't forget to hit the like button and let me know. You can also subscribe if you like so you don't miss the next one. I'm giving her some gothic eyeliner with Derwent fine liner pens. A few swirly lines are enough to frame the face with a little curve for a mouth and a little smudge of purple on the lower lip. That'll need another coat of fixative, then it's back to the cat. I'm using some wax linen thread for the whiskers. I start at the side of the nose, stitch through to the back where the buttons are already anchored then come back through to the other side of the nose. I'll be gluing a collar over the stitch at the back so that'll hold the whiskers in place. I'll give those a trim, then it's back to the girl to give her some hair. I'll put a link at the top of the screen to a video where I went into a bit more detail on making a miniature cat. I was going to use black bamboo for the hair, then I thought about adding a streak of colour. Then I got carried away and decided to make a blend of four different shades. I've got pastel lavender blue, some pale green, a violet purple, and of course black. I'm just mixing a few strands of each colour together. I'm going to needle felt it to the head, a small section at a time, using the clover pen style tool and three 38 gauge needles. Felting needles are quite brittle and break easily if they hit anything solid so I'm careful to felt around those stitches and knots at the back. The bamboo fibre is all from World of Wool in the UK. They do have a few premix blends but sometimes I think it's fun to make your own so it can be different every time. I keep layering on more bamboo in overlapping rows. I love how this blend of colours is turning out. That just needs a quick trim to tidy up the ends, then I'll give it a blast with a hairdryer to straighten it all. I've named this little girl Lola Brimstone. Her cat is called Odin. These two were made to be together, so they'll be sold as a pair. You can find all the dolls I have available on my website at spiderthread.com. I'll put a link in the description. If you'd like to see me make another miniature cat, go watch this video next and I'll see you next time. Bye!